Greetings, everyone. Ronnie Landis. I uh, just wanted to come to you with um, hopefully a quick message that's really coming through for me right now. It's a little late right now, but what better time to hop on here and share a message? So I was just kind of um, uh, almost like channeling some energy and just really in a process of getting very, very focused on what's coming up in 2019, my goals, my values, my priorities, what's important to me, what is not, what I am moving forward with, what backpack full of things that I'm moving forward with and what I'm letting go. And, um, you know, I coach a lot of people. I, I, um, I help a lot of people. There's something in my mouth. Cacao. I help a lot of people and um, gain more direction and clarity in their life and to empower themselves to move forward with what it is they're wanting to create in the health and wellness journey that they're on usually. One of the things that really came up for me is one of the, the mistruths or incomplete statements in spiritual circles that really started to, to um, kind of itch at me. I don't know why in this moment. But it was itching at me, and it's this whole idea of never pushing back on life, never um, not having any competition, there's no opposition, like this kind of higher spiritual principle of oneness, um, which is which is valid, of course, and it's a higher spiritual principle that's not easily applicable in most situations in life. Now, do I mean that you you need to fight with life? No. Let me explain my thought process here. What I realize is that there is a push and a pull to life. There are poles of each side of a magnet, and there's a positive and a negative electrical charge. There's an anabolic and catabolic process. There's entropy and syntropy in the world. There's breakdown and rebuilding in the world. Um, there's an adaptive and an innate aspect of your entire immune system. There's a right and left hemisphere of your brain connected through a corpus callosum. Um, there's masculine and feminine, right? There's strong and weak. There is, um, everything has an opposite side to it. It has a complementary opposite to it. So this idea that there's only flow, there's only grace, there's only ease, um, or that's the way it should be, or, um, the, or everything is all one is true enough. However, in the world that we live in, the reality matrix that we're a part of in the dual processing system of the world, meaning the duality of our the mechanics of our quantum world, the world that we experience on a day to day basis, we have to take an account of the complementary opposites and we have to get clear on what the hero's journey actually entails. One of the things that I was really getting passionate about before I got on here was this idea that um, you know, for the superhero to emerge in all classical dramas, all classical superhero movies, stories, there's always a protagonist and 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 and, and um, an antagonist, right? There's a there's a quote unquote hero and a quote unquote villain. Now, I'm not going to get into like the archetypical complexities of that because it's never black or white. There's always a lot of psychological underplay that goes into both sides. Neither one is perfect, evil or perfect good. However, with that aside. There are different poles. There is an oppositional force in life. Now, for me, in the work that I do, and as as a self-bestowed superhero for health and natural foods and for the environment and for the sanctity of animals and for humanity and for um, you know all the different things that I'm about that are valuable and meaningful to me, as a protector of the sacred, a protector of what's real, that means that I am beckoned to oppose, in a sense, oppose <clears throat> the forces that seek to destroy life, that seek to trample on the garden, that seek to, um, you know, dishonor the sacred. <clears throat> And so there, there is a need for people to mature spiritually and psychologically to the point where they realize that there is a time to push and there is a time to pull, right? So if life, let's say life, we're not going to say different compartments of, of what that means. I'll share mine though. <clears throat> if life pushes, then we pull, right? This is the principle and this is the Aikido martial arts principle of navigating life is that you don't take it. 
right? You don't just stand there like a bystander or like this this naive kind of person who just thinks, oh, it's all love and light. It's not real. Um, we can get to that place. And that's a Qigong mastery principle is that eventually there is no push or pull, but you're actually so much one with everything that it just goes through you. The 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 dagger or the sword, so to speak, goes through you and you're unaffected. However, on the ground where I'm speaking about is a principle where life pushes on you, it pressures you, different challenges are put onto you that you you flow with it. You pull. When it pushes, you pull, right? So you're not being swung off, off balance, but you also have to stay in your center, right? And that's why you learn how to move and these kind of things. But then there's a time where you have to take the, uh, the opposition on. You have to be the one to take the initiative. You have to put pressure. You have to, you have to push. And so for me, when I think about that principle, just from the superhero context, what's my opposition exactly? Well, my opposition is um, corporations like Monsanto, institutions like the... Um, well, I don't want to say institution so much. And by the way, all these things can get convoluted because essentially what I'm talking about is a corporation or different symbolic um, uh, um, organizations, which all are composed of people. And this is where it can get the wording can get a little tricky because, you know, it could seem like I'm opposing people. The people, and that's a more complex thing because a corporation or a movement, no matter what direction it's going, is based on the fuel of people. What I'm talking about is the symbolism, the archetype of what Monsanto is, the the archetype of evil and destruction that the symbol, the archetypical symbol of what Monsanto represents, proven by its behavior. Um, you know, the, the different, the, the medical practices, the, the, the pharmaceutical corporations, the, the factory farm organizations, the, all the, the, the oil industry, you know, et cetera, et cetera. These aren't directly my enemies, so to speak, but from this perspective, they are my opposition because it gives me something to push against. Now, again, this is like, I feel like I have to throw a few disclaimers out here. I don't want to do that. I want to let the message be clear. So hopefully, you know, you know, the nuances of what I'm saying, and it doesn't trigger some kind of like belief in you about nonviolence or non-duality, um, because th there very realistically is violence in our world, isn't there? Right. And no, no amount of people standing by and pretending it's not happening seems to really be um, dispelling it too much. It actually seems to me that the only way things are getting done in the world um, and change is being made is through the behavior and the consistent actions and sometimes the um, aggressive actions of individuals that seek to counterbalance the imbalance that's happening in the world. All right? I don't remember what exactly it was that Martin Luther King said. I mean, I remember what it was. I don't remember the exact quote, but it was something like, Evil persists when good people do nothing. So that that really kind of sums up essentially what I'm talking about in this sense. Evil persists when good people do nothing. So you got to learn how to use this push and pull dynamic in your life because the path to meaning is all about solving a big enough problem through the ingenuity of your unique gifts and what you can bring forth, and the courage that you choose to dawn upon yourself, and, um, and what you choose to do with your, with your life, with your time, with your energy, with your actions, your investments, how you, how you spend your money, um, the food that you're eating, where is it coming from, is it, is it ethical, is it, is, does, it have, um, does it have a chain of effect that's beneficial and supportive, or is it leading to further disharmony? You know, all these things are so important and we can't chip away all of them at once, but ultimately just understanding this principle that it is actually necessary that we push onto life because that's how you create the reality that you want. You have to mold it. You have to actually apply pressure to it. You can't be just passive and just sitting in the corner and not doing anything. This is a big, huge issue that's taken a lot of people, um, especially in spiritual circles, 
they, it, it's caused them to be inactive and actually not manifest what they're here to do. And then going off to like festivals indefinitely and then wondering why they feel off purpose doing, you know, countless, countless, countless plant medicine ceremonies, but not really integrating the lessons, not actually translating it into their life, into their behavior, into how they show up in the world consistently. And so this has become a, a very big issue, and I'm just using this platform in this moment to re-encourage all of you out there that if you feel that desire and that aggressive fire to make change, then start with yourself and change the behaviors that you need to change in your life, but also know that there is a time and there is going to be a time where you're called to apply pressure onto situations to be aggressive in your focus to be aggressive just to be just as well organized as the forces that oppose life that oppose peace that oppose harmony the thing about evil is that it's patient evil is not necessarily impulsive actually evil is very patient because evil is an archetypical phenomenon it's an archetypical energy that's been here since the very beginning so it's not in a rush it's not in a hurry. And there's actually a lot of things we can learn from evil, right? There's actually a lot of strategical points we can learn from it. And that, that gets into a conversation about integrating your shadow aspect because you need to be more methodical sometimes. We need to be more methodical oftentimes. We need to be less impulsive. We need to be more organized and more disciplined. And we need to prioritize. And so we just need to use that same basic blueprint and apply it to the side of light, apply it to the opposing qualities and, and characteristics and, and things that we want to see in the world and apply ourselves diligently to bringing that out into the world, bringing that forth into the world. Yeah, this is, um, you know, this is one of those wake up calls. And uh, there's so much that can be said. There's so much more that can be said. And I feel like this this year is calling us in. It's calling us to get serious, right? That's really what we're talking about. It's about getting serious. And I don't mean to say like you have to focus on the biggest threat to humanity. It doesn't start there, right? It starts with what's in your back door. It starts with what's on what's on your front door. It starts with what's in your own life. What are the what are the energies or forces that are pushing pre pushing upon you? that are putting pressure on you. And what are you going to do with the pressure? Are you going to fall and fold and crumble under the pressure? Or are you going to create the space you need and re-anchor yourself to purpose and meaning So and then, and then push back? Because that's how you keep the polarities, the magnetic polarity in, in equilibrium and in equanimity, is that that pressure is pressuring on you and it actually wants you to apply pressure to it to keep that dynamic balance. Right, good and evil are two sides of the same coin of creation. They're they're indispensable, um, inexhaustible energies that are built into the mainframe of our reality since its inception. It's an archety it's archetypal. It's not going anywhere. So instead of folding under the pressure of it, better to step up and put pressure onto it so it keeps it in balance. That's how you keep the the universe in balance. That's how you keep everything in its dynamic its dynamic oscillation of 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 harmony you don't back out you don't fold right that's why we got to get out of some of the fantasy thinking that that has kind of distracted a lot of people distracted myself for sure and um taken us into fantastical theories of like this thing whether it's like the flat earth or it's, um, you know, whatever variation of conspiracy theories and different or facts and different stories. I mean, I know how far I've gotten off on ufology and, and ancient civilizations and studying every single corner of, you know, the quantum reality and different esoteric and occult things. But then I realized this is actually, I'm going so deep into this that it's actually taking me a little bit into fantastical land and it's not translating into my practical life. It's not actually allowing me to be more embodied and to make and to do what I need to do here on the ground, the groundwork that I'm here. I'm a field investigator. So it's not allowing me to investigate my personal field. It's keeping me off in these different areas of, of potential delusion. 
no matter how interesting or, or intellectually stimulating it is, ultimately it can become a big distraction if it's not directly aligned with our core work, our core focus, what we're here to do. And uh, so, you know, that's, uh, I just feel like that's really important. We need to gauge things based on the results that they produce, right? We need to gauge things based on the results that they produce. And if different different habits or different things are done consistently and they're not producing the results that we want, then we need to be objective and clear and say, okay, I went off on this tangent over here. I got distracted. Let me recenter myself. Let me come back to center so I can see both sides of the coin. Because if I go too far here, I won't be able to see that. It's a swinging pendulum. I won't be able to see it clearly and I'll get stuck over here thinking that's all that reality is. Or this is the new trend, the new spiritual theme, the new paradigm. This is the new thing I need to focus on. No, that's that. No, not at all. Come back to center, recenter ourselves, and we do that through through the breath. We do that through creating new goals for ourselves. We do that through journaling. We do that through meditation. We do that through starting each day anew. And focusing on what are our primary goals? What am I here to do right now? What is my work to do right now? And to take the initiative and to do it. And that's also what I mean by putting pressure. I don't mean this like forced kind of thing. I mean centering ourselves and then applying pressure onto the onto what it is that we are focused on. What is that we want to create? If you're a sculptor, you can't sculpt something you can't sculpt a, um, a sculpture if you don't apply pressure to it even the, the painter with the paintbrush has to apply pressure to the painting you get what I mean that make I hope hopefully that makes a lot more sense to some people that's what I mean by apply pressure sometimes it's going to be harder usually when we've been distracted for too long that's when the pressure gets harder because we have to we have to apply more of it but when you're in this continuity and this flow in life and you're present then it's just a little bit of pressure and you actually create what you're trying to create quicker, easier, and it's more enjoyable. So, okay, everyone, that's my message. Just a spontaneous transmission for everyone out there. Hope this was valuable. Go out there in the world, be bold, be courageous, apply the necessary pressure that you need to, and then flow with what life brings to you.